Hey, hey! Okay, so just a heads up, this tutorial was only made in one day, so sorry if the quality isn't that good. Anyway, I just wanted to say thank you so much and please enjoy the video. Okay, so on a new layer, select all of the clothes. Well, not all the clothes, just the jacket part first. Once you selected it, get the color and with your regular airbrush, we're going to create a gradient. You can select your gradient from this area. So the top will be lighter and the bottom will be darker. It helps give a little more dimension to your clothes and it's just something that I do. Make a new layer, set it to multiply, and get a color like this. With my custom brush, which you can find in many of my other videos, we're going to be creating the shadows. Most shadows aren't really visible through the line art. And they're visible later on when you actually draw the shadows, instead of creating shadows in the line art. Um, if you understand what I mean, instead of doing this, do this. Okay, make a new layer, and, well, you don't have to, I'm just showing you where we're getting our light source from. Which is from the top left corner. Once we're back on our old layer, we're gonna just continue doing the shadowing. I honestly don't know how to explain this much and I'm sorry. Get the blur tool and only blur the bottom of the shadow. It helps soften things up and it sh How do I explain this? Sorry, just don't blur the entire shadow and go overboard with blurring. Make a new layer and set it to multiply and we're going to be creating even more shadows. So these are just going to be wrinkles in the clothes. <sighs> it hurts to talk. Use a smudge tool and smudge it in the direction of the shadow, don't just smudge randomly. Smudge it according to the shape of the object. You can merge layers so you don't get confused with things, and get the airbrush. And don't forget to lock your layer. When you lock your layer, everything inside that layer will stay within the layer, if you understand. And we're giving the shadow a gradient because that does help add more detail and make things pop a little more. Lower the opacity to your liking and select the object that you're shading so that we can add a gradient of color. The bottom will be darker and the top will be lighter. Make a new layer, set it to screen, and get a lighter color of the base color. Put it at the very top of the shadows where the light would hit. These are just, it's a very small detail, but for me it makes a big difference. Get the smudge tool and smudge it a bit so it's not that visible. These are going to be very uh, subtle things. Lower the opacity so it's not popping out too much. And... Create a new layer. Set it to multiply and continue doing the shadows until you feel like they're dark enough. You have to use your own judgment on this and you really start to grow judgment from experience. Also, you can have values. You have a light value, a medium value, and a dark value. Here, my judgment says that the dark value wasn't enough, so I decided to darken things up a bit. Lower your brush's opacity and start making strokes. But don't just make a straight line stroke Loads are never really just straight, they're always curved. This is a bit of a advanced shading for most beginners, so it's okay if you can't completely do it. We're now defining the shadows again, so just keep making them darker and defining more and more until you feel like it's good enough. I like to create folders so I can keep all my layers organized. And I don't exactly know what to name it, so scarf thing. I don't know. Create a new layer, select the coat, since that's what we'll be coloring now. And also select the pink parts of the coat if you have any other color of it. Select, just select the coat. Make a new layer, set it to multiply, and with our favorite brush, we're going to now be making more shadows. Lower the opacity of your brush, and start making strokes following the form. 
the arm is round it's more like a tube in a way so don't just make a straight line you have to make it curved also because our light source is coming from up there as I said before there will be light hitting here because the body's in the way so it creates shadow also the scarf is making a shadow so more shadows a very important thing, I know I said this before, but some people don't listen. Follow the form of the object. Make things curved, because things are usually curved. Hardly ever do you see something that's actually, like, straight. In clothes. There really isn't much to explain here, but if the shadowing looks a little weird or wonky, don't worry. We're going to be softening them up a bit with the blur tool soon. And once again, be very careful not to like blur things too much. Like we're only doing this so that things seem to blend a little better. We're not doing this to make it really like blurry. Lower the opacity to your judgment. And then we're back to refining the shadows. We're gonna keep doing this process again and again, where we have one layer of shadowing and then we go over another layer of shading. Do the shading again and again and again. You could even change the color to something slightly darker if you want. Just make sure not to go overboard with the shadowing or it'll look completely unnatural. As you could tell, I'm better at shading other things and clothes is probably my weakness. But that's okay, as long as this helped you a little bit or it's a little better than what you could do before, then that's great. Continue refining the shadows. And... Yeah, find the shadows. I'm really sorry, there isn't much to explain. Using the blur tool, we're softening things up a bit. Since the cloth is a soft texture, it's not stiff, so the shadows are gonna be very soft on it, but not like airbrush soft. It's like soft, yeah. You can use your smudge tool to soften everything a little more. And remember, don't just bring it into random directions, try to bring it into the direction where it follows the form of the character. If you don't know what the form is, take it like this. Instead of imagining an arm like this, imagine an arm like this. More into a 3D object. Since what we're shading, yes, it is a 2D character, but you have to think in a 3D perspective when you're doing shading. With a new layer on screen, we're going to be making soft highlights. Highlights really do help bring out things more. And once I started adding highlights to my clothes, it did really help and improve it a lot. I have many, many different styles, so this is only one style of how I do shading. And uh, an important thing is don't go too overboard with the uh, airbrush shadowing or else you'll make the clothes look black when in reality they were supposed to be gray. So make sure that you still keep the color of your clothes. We're now merging everything together just to keep things organized. Also when shading white clothes, make it slightly off-white, like not completely white and usually add towards more of a blue. So that's a light, that's a cool gray. Now we'll be creating the shadows. 
since the clothes aren't colored and it's actually just white, we aren't making a new multiply layer. So lower the opacity of your brush and keep doing strokes like we did previously. Again, with the blur tool, we're blurring only one side of the shadows. Also, just to soften things up a bit, do, don't, don't go overboard with it. With the smudge tool, we're also adjusting the shadows even more. It's okay if it doesn't look perfect, because, well... <laughs> Oof. Okay, make sure your layer is on alpha lock. Oh, never mind, we can't do alpha lock because we didn't do separate layer. So, with your airbrush, just adjust the values more. And now we're gonna be merging every- merging. Every single thing together, so that things are way more organized. Also, for this, this one is gonna be really, really simple. Select the outline and the cloth, and we're all gonna color into the base color. We're gonna then get a dark color with the airbrush and just create a gradient. It's okay if your shading is really simple, there's nothing wrong with that, and actually it's kind of nice. Okay, so there's the finished piece, I guess. Oh, no, actually, we're going to be adjusting this belt a little bit, so that it looks like... We have to draw more wrinkles to make it seem like the belt is pressing against. So create some wrinkles as I'm doing here. And make sure that they're not completely straight, make sure they're curved. We just gotta make sure that it looks like it's connected, instead of looking like it's just floating over the body. we're done. So if it looks a little bad, don't worry. Effects will solve everything. The way that I just run away from actually making things look good is I just run to lighting. Like I just have to do lighting. Okay, shout out to the people that told me to take a break until my throat feels better. You were right, I'm sorry. I'm gonna go take a break for the rest of the day. Hopefully my throat will feel better tomorrow. I'll be doing more recordings tomorrow for my Q&A video. Okay, thank you and see ya. Have a good night, day, or wherever you are. Thank you for watching the video, and please, please read the description. Thanks. Bye!